All right, guys, thank you for joining me today. So today's video, we're going to talk about medical equipment placement inside a vehicle. Hopefully, this will give you guys some ideas. I know every vehicle is different, but this is my vehicle that we're going to use as the example. Now, the, video, the medical kits we are going to be using are going to be refuge medical kits. Obviously, uh, they're packed really well. They're really great pieces of gear to have. I know a lot of you are complaining that they are expensive, but such is life when you buy American. This is what it looks like. It's expensive. So if you want to stay American, you want to buy American, this is the gear to get. So anyway, let's jump into the video. So this is the first gear, obviously the one under my seat. This is the gear that I chose to go with because it has the red handle that I can grab. If I'm not mistaken, this is the ARC. This is the one that I keep under my seat. As you can see, the tourniquet is staged. I know a lot of you complained earlier that I should take the plastic wrap off, so I did. I just didn't want it to get dirty, but whatever, it gets dirty, it gets beat up, I can always buy another one. This one also has, this one also has a, what you call it in it, I forgot what that was called, uh, shears, sorry, uh, so that if I have to operate, not operate, but tear somebody's clothes off or cut something or seatbelt, I can do such. That's why this gear is here. So second gear is under the passenger seat. This is called the small of the back. This one is for people, uh, almost anyone can use it, right? It's almost idiot proof, if you will. That is why it's under the passenger seat, just in case the passenger doesn't know how to use uh, some of the medical kit. I think a lot of the people I hang out with know how to use a tourniquet and most of the gear in here. But just in case I have somebody that's not medically inclined, this is why I store that under their seat. So on this side here, as you can see, or you'll see in a second, I keep the bigger bear kits. Now this is an older uh, bear kit. I don't think he makes this one specifically anymore, but this one goes under the back seats. Now, I normally will put this when the kids are with me right because first of all when you collapse this kind of seat down right these uh these truck seats when you collapse them down the whole thing drops down and you won't be able to keep anything under it my kids are learning how to use medical gear so they can use some of the gear in here to help me out if i need to the other side of that coin guys if i have to drop one of them off and drive to somewhere uh to put the vehicle in a safe spot then they can get out and render aid while I not so much look but put the vehicle in a spot where it's not going to get hit but it's also going to protect people as well. Now I have a more modern uh, bear kit on the other side. I'm going to show you that in a second. So here is the other kit that sits under. Normally my daughter sits in this seat and my uh, one of my sons will sit in that one. So here as you can see the tourniquet is staged. The shears I did take out of them. Uh, I will train them how to use it, but I did take it out of it because I didn't want them to get overzealous with it. I know that it's idiot proof to show someone how to cut something, but I took it out just in case they didn't know what to do or how to do it. I will get to that portion of cutting clothes off and how to cut clothes off because not that there's such a way, but there's a way of going about it without um, flopping blood all over the place. I know a lot of people, when you first get an EMS, you might not be, uh, you might not be really you might not know how sorry how to cut somebody's clothes off without like starting to tear it always use shears when you're going to cut because then you don't have to get your hands as bloody sometimes guys a, a situation so bloody you're getting bloody you have to deal with it now this is another place that i'm putting a kit this is just to show you guys this doesn't necessarily stay here i'm going to show you right now now this is another older bear kit if i'm not mistaken um Actually, it is one of the older bear kits because you don't see the molly webbing on the outside. That's how you can tell what's new and what's not. As you can see, that one there has molly webbing on the side. This one doesn't. Anyway, you can have uh, car cover seats, guys, that have this molly webbing in the back, and then you can hang one in the back as well. Now, depends on who's riding back here. It's going to dictate whether or not they want this shit flopping around. I can secure this a little better, but this is just for video show. So, guys... As you can see, this is hanging here. Now, you're not going to take this whole kit off because the buckles in the back are going to, sorry, the buckles in the back are going to dictate otherwise. That's kind of hard to get off when you're rushing. So what you're going to do is you're going to rip this open and then you're going to pull on that and you're going to pull the kit out. This stays in its place. 
Now you can run with this to whatever, wherever you need to run to. Guys, keep in mind, you're using these kits in an emergency, but you also have to be sure to know how to use these things as well and know how it works. Um, I know that Bear had sent me one of these and it took me a few months to, to get to it. When I finally did, I thought the medical gear was going to be all you know packed in here but no they came up with this snazzy pullout and i was like clutch man that is awesome right and then hopefully your kids or whoever's in the back knows how to use most of the shit now the uh tourniquet is in this plastic sheeting that i am going to take out but uh for the most part i try to leave it in here because i didn't want it to get dirty and i'm also I was also advertising it if you will for them but now that i'm no longer advertising this one i'm going to stage the uh tourniquet but hopefully anybody who rides in my rig knows how to use the tourniquet. Now, this last kit is the hospital kit. I'm gonna show you this right now. So now this is the oh shit kit. I'll put the name of the actual kit at the bottom now. But this kit, guys, if I have to pull this shit out, that means I'm on an MCA, Magical Cast, well, MCI, sorry, Magical Casualty Incident. I think they call it something else now. But I'm old school, so I'm using MCI. And uh, if I have to whip this out, that means I have probably over three, four people injured. This bag can probably treat up to 10, depending on the ailments and what's going on. I know there's a couple of tourniquets in here. There's a couple of, there's, I think, one or two pairs of shears. There's a lot in this bag that I actually have to break this bag down again and put things in its rightful spot. And also use, unfortunately, a different bag because as an old school EMT, I like the square bags that look like this, where I can just open it up and pull everything out as needed. This bag is great because it stores really well in the car. But as far as usage goes, um, what I can also do and what I'm starting to do is buy pouches that look like this and putting everything in its field in there. For example, if it's respiratory, it goes in this pouch. If it's stop bleed, it goes in that pouch. If it's medical or sickness, it goes in this little pouch. So I'm starting to do that with this bag. But I also want to go back to my old school method where I can just look in the bag and reach out what I need. And they have bags that do that in pouches as well. So also, this is not part of the kit, but these are SAM splints. These are really good, especially in accidents, especially if someone breaks an arm or something. This is pretty good. This is good for the arm and the leg. Uh, especially the lower part of the leg, definitely not femur. Um, it's good to have one of those in the in the in the car. I was going to say rig. Uh, so anyway, guys, this is where I placed the majority of my gear. So this bag does not come with me on family vacations because I have nowhere to put it. Bad enough, my kids and my wife they like to bring bring everything with them on a trip. This is the bag that that is the sacrificial lamb. When I'm on the road, this bag comes with me. Uh, from here on out it doesn't go doesn't stay in the house it stays in the truck because i'm on the road a lot i can run into a situation where i'm gonna probably need this and I, listen if i have to go to this bag shit is bad or the situation or the scene is bad also guys one you're operating at an accident scene i'm gonna go over in another video on that especially on a highway you have to be super careful scene safety is what you're going to hear when you take medical courses scene safety is the utmost important thing for you to uh, realize and scope out you got to make sure the scene is safe before you render help especially on a highway you don't want to pull off to the shoulder and dart across the highway to go help somebody then you get hit by a car and you become a casualty don't do it so guys um, if you're going to take medical training, Refuge Medical offers some training. They are really good. There are other medical companies out there as well. I'm being a little biased, and I would say start with Refuge Medical. Uh, Skinny Medic, he's not bad either. That's something that's somebody else to go with. He does a lot of stop bleed courses as well. And then there's Patriot Nurse, who I hear mixed reviews about her medical training. But she is a nurse, and that's something to consider. All right, guys. Anyway, other than that, this is the Angry Prepper. Uh, thank you for watching.